Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. This is a course on natural dyes and innovative natural dyeing processes. This is the first lecture where we will be talking mainly about what are natural dyes. The first lecture is on introduction to natural dyes. What is meant by natural dyes? Natural dyes are colorants extracted from plants and animal sources and sometimes even mineral sources mainly and that have been used for centuries to color textiles, food, cosmetics and other materials. Synthetic dyes are different which are manufactured from petrochemicals. Natural dyes are sourced from renewable materials found in nature. Examples of natural dye sources include plants, many plants which contain compounds that can be extracted and used as dyes. So, they are basically colorants which are present and you must have noticed all around yourself that there are flowers, stems, leaves which are very intricately colored. For example, indigo plant produces blue dye. Madder root yields red dye and turmeric which is a common condiment in the kitchen produces yellow dye. From animal sources, certain animals such as mollusks and insects produce pigments that can be used as dyes. For instance, cochineal insect produces a red dye while shellfish produces purple dye. So, it is not only plants, but also animals which produce colors. Now, natural dyes are supposed to be eco-friendly. Now, what does the word eco-friendly mean? It means that anything that does not harm the environment or human being is called eco-friendly. And natural dyes are valued for their eco-friendliness as they are typically biodegradable and non-toxic. Non-toxic means that they should not create any toxins in the environment or they should not be toxic to human consumption. They can also produce a wide range of colors, although they may require different mordants and mordants are substances that help to fix the natural dye to the fabric and techniques compared to the synthetic dyes because they are different from synthetic dyes. So, when we are dealing with natural dyes, we need to remember that the colorant has to be fixed in a particular manner unlike the synthetic dyes. Additionally, natural dyes often impart a unique character and depth to the textiles which can be appreciated for their aesthetic qualities. However, natural dyes may also be less color fast and less consistent than the synthetics and dyes which are analogous, requiring careful attention to application and maintenance to ensure lasting color vibrancy. Now, one thing that we have to remember always that synthetic dyes and natural dyes are different. First thing, the fastness properties of these two dyes are also different and the color palette that we get from the two dye categories are also different. So, all this has to be kept in mind when we are learning this course on natural dyes. The challenges faced with natural dyes and handling the dyes are some of them. 
natural dyes offer a fascinating blend of historical tradition, cultural significance and environmental consciousness. Their use continues to evolve as artisans and industries explore ways to integrate them into modern practices while addressing challenges related to color fastness and scalability. Now, I am bringing in new words, but at the same time I am also trying to explain color fastness means that the color that has adhered to the fabric by using natural dye should remain on the fabric, then only it will be called as color fast. And scalability, when we do a small scale natural dyeing in a beaker, it is quite different from dyeing in a dyeing machine. And so, are we able to scale it up is what is meant by scalability when we are trying to commercialize the natural dyeing process. While natural dyes are gaining popularity, their use in large scale commercial production always faces challenges related to the cost, consistency and scalability. But I can tell you by the end of this lecture series, you will realize that natural dyeing is scalable and the cost is also cost effective and we have been able to get the consistency through standardization of the natural dyeing processes. We have also come up with nat innovative natural dyeing techniques which has helped us to get the consistency. Achieving uniform colors on a large scale with natural dyes can be more difficult as compared to synthetic dyes and even this challenge has been overcome because now we have been able to standardize the whole process very carefully and there is a repeatability that is attained. How to use natural dyes? Using natural dyes often involves extracting colorants from their sources and then applying them to textiles or other materials. Keep in mind that natural dyes may have limitations compared to synthetic dyes such as variations in color intensity and fastness to washing and light, which means that they have to be dealt quite differently from the synthetic dyes and the dyeing process. The entire natural dyeing process is different from the process that, that is adapted for synthetic dyeing. However, the appeal lies in their sustainability and the uniqueness that they bring in. Often stubble, colors that they produce are very soothing to the eyes. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in natural dyes due to the growing awareness of environmental and health concerns associated with synthetic dyes. And I will take a minute to explain why and how synthetic dyes are dangerous and harmful, carcinogenic and not eco-friendly. Synthetic dyes are made from petrochemical sources and their manufacturing processes involves use of many hazardous chemicals. As a result, they do not bring in eco-friendliness and they sometimes are non-biodegradable. As a result, they are supposed to be very harmful. And that is why there is a resurgence of natural dyes where these things can be taken care and these natural dyes are eco-friendly. They do not have toxic chemicals which can be harmful to the environment or human health. Additionally, artisans and designers appreciate the distinctive 
and often earthy tones that natural dyes can impart on their creations. Actually, one can make out by looking at a dyed fabric whether it has been synthetically dyed or natural dyed because natural dyes as I told you has a very soothing and very earthy finish on the dyed fabric. Now, let us try to understand in a little deeper manner what are natural dyes. Natural dyes are colorants derived from plants, minerals or animal sources. They have been used for thousands of years to color textile, food and other materials as what I told in the very beginning. Unlike synthetic dyes which are often derived from petrochemicals, natural dyes are obtained from renewable sources. Now, what does the word renewable sources mean? Something which grows again and again and we do not lose source at all. We get it more and more from the same plant and are generally considered more environmentally friendly. Some of the common plant sources are indigo obtained from the leaves of indigo plant and it produces shades of blue. You must have seen the denim uh, pants and jackets. These are all dyed with indigo and most of them are dyed of course by synthetic indigo, but now there has been a trend that big companies like Levi's and other companies are trying to use indigo dye from sourced from plant because of the environmental safe factor. Then comes madder which is a beautiful color of red, orange and brown hues and this is derived from the roots and stems of the madder plant and this is also used in Ayurveda and it is known as manjist in Sanskrit. Turmeric gives a yellow dye which is from the roots and rhizomes of turmeric plant. Henna known for its use in body art which is called mehndi has also been produced from the leaves of henna plant and it produces orange and brown colors in the textile. When did the use of natural dyes start? Now, use of natural dyes was when the color came into existence. Ever since primitive people could create, they have been enduring to add color to the world around them. They used natural color matter to stain their hides, to decorate their shells and feathers and paint their story on the walls of ancient caves. And we have seen that in that Ajanta and Alora caves still have the naturally dyed and painted walls. Scientists have been able to date the black, white, yellow and reddish pigment made from ochre used by primitive man in the cave paintings to over 15,000 BC, BC means before Christ. So, you see it has been as old and as primitive as they are and you know the date tells you that. And from that period the civilized or the process of civilization had begun and people were using different sources of natural dyes to color not only their clothes, but also they were wearing hides that were made of leather clothing. So, in all forms wall paintings, cotton cloth and leather these primitive dyes were being used. Common sources of natural dyes are plenty and as we go along the lecture you will realize that we have so many colored plants and animal sources around us and we need to just explore and exploit them because they are renewable. 
So, the dyes that were used from plants and some of them were used from animal sources are abundantly available and common one that were used were indigo which was from the leaves of the indigo plant imparting blue color, tyrant purple was extracted from a shell, alizarine was extracted from the madder plant which gave reddish color, cochineal was derived from the scale insect Dictylopius coccus and is known for producing vibrant ring red and pink color. Logwood dyes were extracted from wood lumen and so these dyes were particularly very very deep in color and gave a very nice spectrum of color range. How dyeing was done earlier is a different matter although it was not very evolved process, but we have come up with a new evolved innovative technology of natural dyeing. Other sources of natural dyes are turmeric which I told you gives yellow color, catechu katha which gives brown color and green color is obtained from mulberry leaves, gamut of colors from natural dyes. Due to variety of plants and animal sources available in nature, a full palette of colors can be achieved by varying mordants and what are mordants? These are using metallic salts or enzymes or biomordants. As we go along, we will have a dedicated lecture about mordants and there I would elaborate more significantly about how these metal salts are used, how enzymes are used, how biomodernants are used along with plant and animal sources of colorants. Let me tell you that in the very beginning the processing of dyeing a fabric with natural dye does require some kind of auxiliary and those auxiliaries can be categorized under mordants. Blending dyes together like kutch and cochineal or madder with logwood and re dyeing or over dyeing, indigo gives green on osage or burgundy on madder many more shades can be obtained. So, we have the flexibility of re dyeing by two different dyes and get a completely new range of color. Many dyes are available as raw materials that is they are ground leaves or petals or roots. Some are always sold as extracts that is fistic, lac and indigo and some are available in a specially prepared concentrated extract form and there are now companies who are producing these extracts and selling them to the natural dyers. Essence of using natural dyes. Now, why do we think that we should switch over to natural dyes is the main question. The revival of natural dyes has kept the ancient knowledge alive. The most obvious reason is the low impact that they have on people and environment as they are biodegradable. Use of natural dyes is safe and sustainable. By using natural dyes, a demand for these products can be created, providing income and incentive to people to maintain practices of local sustainability remaining close to tradition. So, there were natural dyes and natural dyeing being practices in local regions all over India. Now, these practi practices actually went obsolete when natural dyes were replaced with synthetic dyes. So, these practices were only known to the older generation. With the revival of natural dyes, 
The younger generation is encouraged to use natural dyes from their local area, so that the renewable sources are act made active and there is a sustainability factor added to the whole process. If the natural dye is locally available and it is extracted and used by the local people, it gives three fold of advantage. First, it uses the flora and fauna of the local area, thereby not allowing it to degrade unnecessarily, adding value addition through that. Second is it gives employment to the local people and third is that the traditional knowledge is conserved and therefore, the dyeing process is also conserved because in each of these pockets where they were earlier practicing natural dyeing, they have a certain method of dyeing and that traditional method should not be lost because this is a process which is very, very indigenous to our culture and we should maintain it. Going forward, extracting color from the natural sources often involves boiling, fermenting or soaking the material, raw material. Now, it is not as easy as what it sounds to be. Each plant has to be extracted in a kind of compatible manner, so that most of the colorant can be extracted in one go. And we have developed many processes for that. And when we come to the chapter of extraction of colorants, we will deal it in more details. The extracted dye is then usually concentrated through evaporation and then it is used for dyeing. Modern substances that help fix the dye to the fabric are often used in conjunction with natural dyes. And as I told you in the very beginning that natural dyes require auxiliaries for the dyeing process. Common modernes that are usually used or were being used are alum, iron salts and copper salts. Of course, we have come a long way now different types of biomoderns, enzymes and other substances have been replaced along with some of the rare salts, rare earth salts are also being used as moderns. We get earthy colors from natural dyes. Natural dyes can produce a wide range of colors, although the pellet may be more subdued compared to the synthetic dyes which are very bright in color. Colors can range from earthy tones to vibrant hues depending on the source and preparation. But there are very vibrant colors in natural dyes also. It is not a common phenomena that all natural dyes are earthy and a little subdued. Using natural dyes involves a combination of traditional knowledge and modern techniques to achieve the desired color while considering environmental and ethical consideration. So, natural dyes, the knowledge, traditional knowledge combined with the upgradation of the dyeing technology can actually bring in brilliant dyeing results. While natural dyes have many advantages, they also come with challenges. The color fastness, resistance to fading of natural dyes can be a concern and achieving consistent and bright colors may be more challenging compared to synthetic dyes. So, there are challenges with natural dyes, but as I told you a while ago that these challenges can be overcome by the technological upgradation of the natural dyeing process. Variety of colors can be obtained. 
It is a myth that people think that you know natural dyes have very uh, small range of colors. That is not true. Natural dyes can produce a diverse range of colors including red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown and black. However, the range may be more limited as compared to synthetic dyes and achieving certain intense or bright shades may be found to be a little challenging. But as I told you a while ago, we have this uh, you know uh, idea that we can re-dye or over-dye two different dyes and that can give a completely new color range. However, we were able to get very intense colors with natural dyes by the use of appropriate mordant and auxiliaries and this is possible. One challenge with natural dyes is ensuring color fastness because when you and I go to buy a dyed fabric, we want the color to retain there even after 20 washes. So, anybody who is purchasing a natural dyed fabric would also want to see that the color fastness of the dyed fabric remains at least for 20 wash cycles. And this is an ability of the dye to resist fading or running when exposed to factors like light, wash or rubbing. So, with natural dyes we look at light fastness that means when light is exposed to these fabric continuously as we go out in the sun, the UV rays should not fade them. The washing should be sustained for at least 20 to 25 wash cycles and there should be good rubbing fastness. The color should not rub on our hands when we are wearing garments made out of natural dyes. Moderns and proper dyeing techniques can improve color fastness but it can still be less predictable than synthetic dyes. But these were the challenges which were initially there while dealing with natural dyes, but over a period of time one has overcome all these challenges very carefully. Now, the role of metal mordant in binding the colorant to the fabric is as what is shown on the figure. Now, this figure is actually of a dye molecule and it is when the mordant is actually metal part of the mordant is actually chelating with the two oxygen, it binds the colorant to the fabric which means that the metal acts as a bridging head between the colorant and the fabric and that is how it is well explained the role of the auxiliary and without the auxiliary mordant metal salt this would not adhere to the fabric so well. Now, I will give you a very beautiful example that with mordant and by using mordant before dyeing and after dyeing you can see that different colors are obtained and obviously from this side, slide you can make out that pre mordanting gives deeper shades as compared to post mordanting. Let me first explain you what is pre mordanting and what is post mordanting. Pre mordanting as the name suggests is when the mordanting salt solution is dipped first before dyeing. That means, the fabric is first dipped into the mordant solution and then dyed it is pre mordanting. But when the dyeing is first done and then the mordant is treated, then the process is called post mordanting. Now, it is very obvious from the slide that post mordanting does not help the metal salt to chelate well. When the metal salt is first treated and dyeing is done, the metal holds up to the dye molecule 
and attaches to the fabric. So, this is how the role of premordenting with madder was shown. Similar results are obtained when we look at mulberry leaves extract. Premordenting gives deeper color and postmordenting gives lighter color. So, it is obvious that mordant does play a very crucial role when it is applied uh, before the uh, dyeing process and therefore, pre-mordanting is preferred over post-mordanting. Environmental sustainability is a big factor attached to natural dyes. Natural dyes are generally considered more environmentally friendly than their synthetic counterparts. However, the environmental impact can vary depending on factors such as cultivation processes, harvesting methods and use of mordants. Now, I will explain one thing here that suppose if we use toxic metal salts as mordant then the process will no longer be environmentally friendly because the metal salt will pollute the water bodies as the effluent from the dyeing process will be run into the water bodies. So, toxic metals and toxic mordants such as that of salts of copper and chromium should be completely avoided use of safer mordants like alum, iron, tin as well as rare earth salts which were used for the first time by our research group in natural dyeing should be used or we can go for biomordants and enzymes. Mordants play a crucial role in dyeing process by helping fix the color to the fabric and this I have told a while ago also. Some of the common mordants that we regularly use in natural dyeing are alum, iron salt, copper salt, but copper salt here is used in 0.5 percent and some of the tin salts. Additionally, modifiers such as acids or alkaline substances can be used or should be used which can alter the color of the natural dye during or after the dyeing, uh, dyeing process. Now, what happens? What is the role of acid and alkaline material in natural dyeing? Some of the natural dyes, if we look at the structure of the natural dyes, we will find that they are susceptible for protonation and when they get protonated, when the oxygen moiety of their molecule gets protonated then it switches into another structure and these two structures have different color to uh, contribute to and that is why these modifiers are used for whichever desired color we wish to obtain on the fabric. Well, why are we at all talking about natural dyes? because there is a global natural dye market which is anticipated to generate revenues of approximately 5 billion dollars by the end of this year, growing at a CAGR that is cumulative annual uh, you know uh, development and cost of that of around 11 percent during 2018 to the current year 2024. So, you know that there is a big market for uh, this natural dyed products and natural dyes have attracted the attention of even the synthetic dye manufacturers and these are some of the naturally dyed fabric material made into garments on silk which have been put on display for you to realize that the color are very brilliant. 
natural dyes have been used not only for dyeing, but they have also been used for block printing with natural dyes and these are some of the examples where block printing, we have a dedicated lecture for block printing. So, we will be talking about that in detail, but for the time being it is not only dyeing, but also printing which has been our traditional uh, printing process and that is block printing with natural dyes has also been attained. Bandhani and printing with natural dyes has also been attained and these are some of the examples because in Bandhani and in printing a uh, floral diagram or be it any kind of tie and dye, natural dyes can give beautiful color combination by using an appropriate dye. The upper example is made from log dye and the lower dye uh, and, and, and printed material is made from katachu or katha or kach. So, you can see that beautiful colors can be obtained. Natural dye resurgence. In the realm of fashion and textile, there has been a resurgence of interest in natural dyes as a part of broader movement towards sustainable and slow fashion, which means that now natural dyes are being fetched after more than synthetically dyed fabric, both by the fashion uh, organizations as well as the new trends in textile demands that the fabric be as sustainable and as close to nature, biodegradable, eco-friendly and so on. Artisans, designers and consumers are exploring natural dyes as a way to reduce the environmental impact of textile production. So, all are now vouching artisans, designers, consumers, they are all moving towards using natural dyes for the simple reason that these dyes should not have a you know an impact on the environment, an adverse in fact impact on the environment. And that is the reason why people are now moving more towards natural dyes and they are trying to understand that how to bring natural dye into the regular fashion and textile industry in a big way. Natural dye traditions often have strong ties to specific regions and cultures and we have seen that India has great diversity and these pockets of artisans in different area be it down south, be it Gujarat, be it Punjab and many other places have specific culture and design patterns which also we will see in one of the lectures. The availability of certain plants and mineral influences the color palette used by different communities, because they were more uh, concentrating on the plants that were locally available. So, in order to scale it up, they can now think of having a proper farming strategy for those colorant plants, so that they can be used locally to get different color palettes. The use of locally sourced material contributes not only to the uniqueness and cultural significance of natural dyeing practices, but also it is sustainable. They do not have to be dependent on other sources for being there and uh, so they can be cost effective, consistent and more sustainable. 
Now, when we talk about commercialization of natural dyes, it brings in bigger challenges. While natural dyes are gaining popularity, their use in large scale commercial production faces challenges related to cost, consistency and scalability. And a while ago, I did mention that, that these are challenges which need to be overcome. Doing a small scale dyeing in a laboratory, in a beaker or in a small dyeing machine is much easier than dyeing thousands of meters of material having consistent result, being cost effective and can give you know a uniform result is definitely very challenging, but it is not impossible. Let me tell you achieving uniform colors on large scale with natural dyes is difficult as compared to synthetic dyes, but it is not impossible or it cannot be achieved. It can be achieved and we have been able to do that by standardizing the whole natural dyeing process. We have an entire lecture dedicated for the standardization of natural dyes and we will then see how we had overcome this. So, standardization of natural dyes have to be done in order to achieve consistency and uniformity. We have overcome this difficulty of shade variation in batch to batch with natural dyeing process. Earlier when we were doing these experiments, there were such challenges and then we tried to work very hard by using innovative technology to overcome the shade variation problem from batch to batch. The dye content in the dye extract needs to be quantified beforehand to achieve this goal. We cannot use a very arbitrary method of dyeing. Everything has to be calculated, every step has to be specified how many grams of dye is being made uh, use of in the dye bath, what is the percentage of the, uh, the modern that has to be used, which type of modern we are using and more importantly what is the weight of the fabric, because every calculation is dependent on the weight of the fabric. Proper choice of mordant temperature, pH and water quality can lead to consistent results. So, as I told you that it is not absolutely impossible, it is possible and we can do this process very carefully by taking care of every step and having done a small scale experiment helps us to scale it up for commercialization. And now, we have come up with dye recipes, which means that we have an entire recipe for indigo dye, we have an entire recipe for madder, for turmeric, for catechu and many other dyes that we have explored. In the process, more than 55 new sources have been uh, identified as natural dye sources and they are all available around us. Some of them are temple waste flowers, which can be recollected and recycled. Some of them are forest waste, which shed off like eucalyptus bark sheds off every, twi every time twice in a year and so they can be collected and colorant can be extracted from the bark. So, one has to be on a lookout that before these plant products perish by decomposing in nature, one can collect them and extract the colorant 
and that can give value addition to these forest waste and kitchen waste and also the temple waste. So, it is not completely impossible. Now, reason why using natural dyes is advantageous, it is not only that I am telling you that natural dyes are good, so you should accept. Natural dyes offer a fascinating blend of historical tradition, cultural significance and environmental consciousness. Now, this these three words uphold a lot of importance. Historical tradition means that we are preserving our traditional knowledge. The primitive people who started using natural dyes were doing in a traditional manner and they must have spent years and years of experience to come to that process and we should preserve that process. Every region has its cultural heritage and it has its own significance. We should adhere to that significance and we should not let it die. The cultural idea like the Ajrak dyeing printing material tradition is very much of Gujarat. Now, if we allow it to become obsolete, it would be that we would lose a particular art of dyeing or a Bhagru uh, you know printing technique which is a resistant technique will also die off if we do not preserve. So, therefore, it has a cultural as well as historical tradition and of course, using natural dyes we are looking at a sustainable situation for our future generation and we are being environmentally conscious. Their use continues to evolve as artists, artisans and industries explore ways to integrate them into modern practices while addressing challenges related to color fastness and scalability. Now, when we talk about artisans, they contribute to a large area of our artistic caliber and the textile industry, the fashion industry, they are all the time exploring and integrating modern practices, so that these challenges which are supposed to be there for natural dyes for their color fastness and scalability can be overcome and have been overcome. We have come a long way after continuous research and technological advancements to overcome most of these challenges associated with the use of natural dyes. And we know that you know it is not impossible science can find a solution and modern science with traditional knowledge can find a better technological upgraded processes and that is what we strive for. Natural dyes and dyeing technology can now be upscaled for commercial production. So, at the point at which we are in the moment we can confidently say that natural dyeing processes are now ready for commercialization and at many places people are practicing it. And they are all the time consulting us to find solutions to the obstacles that they are facing during the developmental process. So, what I am trying to convey that these processes have been developed and natural dyes are no more you know there was a myth that natural dyes are poor in color fastness, natural dyes have limited color, natural dyes do not give color depth and they wash away, they, they stain the other fabric and so on and so forth. Those myths have been overcome. And 
their challenges that natural dye and dyeing practices are that we should now promote it in a big way because these resources are so easily available to us around us. We just need to explore natural dyes from nature around us and especially not destroying the nature. India has such bio large biodiversity every region right from Arunachal Pradesh to down south Trivandrum every region has different flora and fauna and each of these flora could be a source of natural dyes. You will be interested to know that the northeast which is one of the most neglected states of India from the developmental point of view although they are coming up has the maximum number of dye yielding plants. And I had the opportunity to go there and explore some of the very enriched plants which are having good dye content. Now, what do I mean by good dye content? Normally, from a plant source, we get only 4 to 6 percent of dye content if we are very lucky to be able to extract it properly. But in the northeastern region, there were plants which could yield as high as 10 percent of dye. And that was very, very rewarding because these dye contented plants could be brought in and we could research and we could find a technological way of dyeing process. Hence, standardization could be possible, new sources of natural dyes were adapted and uh, were found out. And so, there is now this myth that is that natural dyes have very few colors, very few plants can be used for natural dyes is no more true. And as I told you that 55 plants we have explored other than the earlier ones. So, there is no dearth of plants, there is no dearth of colorants from plants. The only process is that we should be able to extract the plant colorant very well and then use it for fabric for dyeing. The resurgence of natural dyes have indeed experienced in the recent years due to various factors and as I told you earlier environmental concerns with increasing awareness about the environmental impact of synthetic dyes there is a growing interest in eco-friendly alternatives. Natural dyes are biodegradable and less harmful to the environment compared to their synthetic counterparts. Health consciousness that is consumers are becoming more health conscious and are concerned about the potential toxicity of the synthetic dyes. Natural dyes derived from plants, mineral, insects are perceived as much safer alternatives. So, there are more than these reasons for which we should now concentrate on natural dyes in, as compared to synthetic dyes because we have to preserve our environment and we have to preserve our own health. So, we should use less toxic biodegradable because we cannot stop wearing colored clothes. As long as man is there, there would be a demand for colored fabric. We all like colored clothes, colored tapestry in our drawing room. Everywhere we like the paints that are used on the walls of the uh, in the houses are also need to be colored. Asian paint is coming up with new wall colors 
made from natural dyes. So, you see at every field not only textile, but in other fields also the natural dyes are exploring and getting because they have been found to be eco friendly and sustainable and has no health hazard. Sustainable fashion through natural dyes. So, artisans, homemade movements, there is a broader movement towards supporting artisanal and homemade products. Natural dyes often require traditional techniques and craftsmanship, which adds value and authenticity to the product. Cultural preservation, many cultures have a rich tradition of using natural dyes in textile and crafts. There is a growing interest in preserving these cultural practices and techniques leading to a revival of natural dye methods. Even fashion trends, sustainable fashion has gained popularity with many consumers actively seeking out clothing and accessories made from natural dyes and eco-friendly materials including those dyed with natural dyes. So, but natural dyes now need innovation, so government regulation, innovative research and overall there is a resurgence of natural dyes reflecting that a broader shift towards sustainability, environmental consciousness and appreciation for tradition, craftsmanship and cultural heritage is what we are looking for. There is huge amount of scope of natural dyes and there is an increasing demand, there are health concerns and there are safety concerns which move us from synthetic dyes to chemical uh, to uh, natural dyes and therefore, we should prioritize health and safety for the use of natural dyes. For the movement of craft movement also it is a trend and many cultural uh, cultures which have rich tradition of natural dyes should be preserved and should be a cultural heritage standpoint for their aesthetic appeal. Consumers preference of course, is there and we all should look forward for uh, consumers preference is the ultimate and therefore, overall the scope of natural dyes is promising driven by a combination of consumer preferences, industry trends, regulatory measures and ongoing research and innovation. However, challenges must be scalability, consistency of color and cost effectiveness needs to be addressed fully to realize the potential of natural dyes in various industries. Thank you.